Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to design and animate body cells using Adobe After Effects. The best part about this tutorial is the principles you learned today are so customizable that you can truly make it your own once you try it out for yourself. Now let's get started with designing our cell. So we're in After Effects here, and before we create our cell, I wanna actually create a little bit of a fun background to put behind it. So what I'm gonna do is click Control Y, and I'm going to create a white background here. Now what I'm gonna do is label this a background. Then I'm going to duplicate this and label this grid. We'll hide our background for now. I'm gonna click on our grid and add a grid effect. And then I'm gonna switch corner point to with slider. And right away we have perfect squares and I could change the size of this to my liking. Now what I'm gonna do is increase our border strength. And what that's gonna do is thicken up these lines, but we're gonna thicken them up so much that we have these little, little dots here. It's looking a lot better. Next thing we're gonna do is actually animate the direction of our grid effect. So I'm gonna to go to anchor here, click U, and I'm going to move up our actual grid effect just like that. It doesn't have to go by much, it's supposed to be subtle. Now by default, the grid effect is white as you can see, but we're gonna change the color here. We're gonna make this a really dark green. And then we're gonna turn our background layer on and now we have these little white dots. And say we wanted to see more of the white, all we need to do is change the size of this here and we can make the dots larger or we can change the actual border strength. So it's really however we want it to look. It's a really customizable and fun effect. So I encourage you to try stuff out with this. All right, next thing we're gonna do is actually create our cell, which is why you're here. So I'm gonna click on our shape layer tool. I'm gonna hold down shift and create a huge circle. Now I'm gonna center this up and I wanna center our actual anchor point. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click Control Alt Home and it's gonna snap that to the center of our shape layer just like that. All right, next thing we wanna do is decide what color we want our cell to be. So I like the green kind of theme that we're going with here, so I'm gonna pick our green, but obviously you can't see it, so I'm gonna make it much lighter. And we'll keep it to like this, this lighter green. So now we have this light green circle that's not doing anything. Now what we need to do is label the cell and then actually add a turbulent displace to get this thing moving. So I'm gonna change our uh, amount here to 41, then I'm gonna change our size to 84. And then with our evolution, I'm going to alt click on this and I'm going to type in time, asterisk 75. So now we have this blobby animated cell and right now it's going at a pretty moderate pace that I like, but if you wanted to increase the speed of that animation and that evolution, I would just change this number here to something higher. So let's say 200, you could have something that's moving and morphing a lot faster. I like 75, so I'm gonna keep it at that. Just wanted to show you guys some options. Next thing we want to do is actually create our shading for the cell. And there are tons of great tutorials out there. This is a really simple way in how to uh, create shading. So I'm just going to create like, say like a blob. We'll make this a little bit darker so we can see what we're looking at. So it's not as dark as our background, but not as light as our actual cell. And I'm gonna mess around with this some more. All right, next thing I'm gonna do here is to actually get that shading look, I'm going to add a rough and edges effect. So I'm gonna add rough and edges here, and now I'm gonna play around with some of the parameters. So I'm gonna change the border to 150, and then I'm gonna change the scale from 100 to 10. And right away we have that shaded textured look, and what I'm gonna do is actually track mat our shading to our cell, so we only see it within our cell. Show our cell again, so here's what we have. So that's not bad, but I want it to move just a little bit, so what I'm gonna do is actually copy our turbulent displace from our cell and paste it into our shading so it moves along with it. Another thing I'm gonna do, I already matted our shading to our cell, but I need to actually parent it. Parent my shading to my cell. So now wherever I move my cell, my shading will go, which is great. And if we want to actually mess with our shading a little bit more, we can. We can mess around with the border a little bit if we want, make it a little bit skinnier. So with our fractal, we could play with that a little bit too. We can even move around the placement of our actual shading. So if we wanted it to be more towards the bottom, we could do that as well. Something like this looks pretty cool. Now, if we wanted these little cell dots to move, all we need to do is mess with the evolution here. So I can alt click on our evolution and type in time, asterisk 100. And right away, we're gonna start to see some movement in the actual cells themselves, but that might not be fast enough. So let's do like 1000. Now we could really see it moving. So that's just another little trick. Maybe we'll go to like 500, see how that looks. That's looking pretty cool. So I love the way this is looking so far. And the next thing we need to do is actually create the insides of our cell, which is really fun to do. So I'm gonna create a new composition and we will call this 
cell insides. And from here, what I'm going to do is create a new shape layer right here. I'm going to change this color to white. Now what I'm going to do is actually create a bunch of different circles within the same shape layer. So I'm going to go to ellipse, duplicate it and move that one around to duplicate it again. All right, same as before, everything is totally customizable here, but I feel like this is a good starting point. So now what we're gonna do is actually move these cells around a little bit. So I'm gonna go to our search bar here, type in position. And what that's doing is pulling up the position, not for the actual shape layer property, but for each one of our ellipses that we have. So when I alt click right here on our ellipse eight, I'm just gonna paste in this expression, which is wiggle 0.2 comma 100. And all that's gonna do is just make this move slightly. And then now what we're gonna do is just copy our expression and we're going to paste it in each one of our other ellipses. And if we want to differentiate it just a little bit, we could change the values here. So maybe we can make this one like three and make it a little bit faster. Maybe we do that to another one, make, make this a little bit faster too, but then maybe we go to one of them and make them a little bit slower. So we want to randomize it as best as we can and allowing that allows us to do this in a complete custom manner. So I'm just going to hide everything here. So we're done with that. And here's what we have. So we have different cells moving at different spots and say maybe I don't want the starting point to be so close to one another. All I need to do is find that actual ellipse here. So I believe that was the second one that I created right here. And all I need to do is just move it. And then right away, it's gonna move around to another random spot. So this is the really easy point and how to actually animate things around right here. Maybe I don't want that top one to be as far up as where it is and so what I can do is just find it right here and then just move that in a little bit more. So here's what we have. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually morph these shape layers together, which is my favorite part of this entire tutorial. It's really easy to do. I'm gonna go click on our cell shapes layer. I'm going to add a Gaussian blur. I'm gonna change our value here to 40 and then I'm gonna go and add a simple choker. And what the choker is going to do is going to allow things to actually kind of stick together and pull apart from one another. So to show you guys what I mean by that, I'm going to bring this up to like, let's say 30. And right away, you see these cells start to morph or separate from one another. So it's just adding that little touch right there. It looks really cool. And if we want, we could adjust our parameters here. We could increase our Gaussian blur a little bit. It's going to shrink the size of them, or we could change our actual choker and that'll also change the size of them. We could bring things back. It's gonna look a little blurrier when we do that. So these are the parameters I like to use, but feel free to mess around and play with it as you feel. Now what I'm gonna do is go back into our working composition here, and then I'm going to bring our cell insides into this as well. Now this is a little bit large, so I'm gonna shrink this down here. That looks good. And now I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with my shading. I'm gonna mat this cell insides layer to my cell, and then I'm going to parent it to our cell too. And now you can see everything come to life, which is really fun. So now I want to show you guys some little techniques that I like to use to help sell this effect just a little bit more. First and foremost, we are going to add another blur onto our cell layers, and we're just going to make it slide to maybe like 10, like this. And it's just going to help blend it in a little bit better. And then I'm also going to add a deep glow. I don't think cells are glowy, but for the sake of the tutorial and you know, using deep glow because I love this plugin, I'm just going to mess with some of these parameters here. And now we have this glowy looking cell insides within the cell. So this is looking really cool. The next thing we wanna do is actually animate our entire cell together. So we wanna bring this into our composition. We could do a scale animation, we could do a position keyframe, but I'm gonna show you guys something a little bit more fun and a little bit advanced, but it's honestly really easy. I'm gonna to go to cell here and I'm going to create keyframes for our amount and size. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna bring these in to let's say like one second. All right, so this is our end point. This is also what we currently have. That's why I'm bringing them down to one second in because this is the end result that we want. So I'm working backwards here. I'm gonna to go to the start and I'm going to bring up my amount and I'm gonna bring up my size. I'm gonna bring up my amount a little bit more. I'm gonna bring up my size a little bit more. And at a certain point, what I'm gonna do is just play this through. See how that looks. Now, if I don't like the way this looks, I can go around and play with our other parameters just to see maybe it can come in from a different angle. I really like this. 
Now what I'm gonna do is highlight my keyframes, click F9 to easy ease them. I'm gonna highlight both of our end keyframes and I'm going to drag these handles to the very front. Let's see how this looks. That looks nice. Now let's drag our front keyframes and see how this looks when we drag these in. All right. So you're probably thinking now, well, you still have these three little cells at the bottom. So what I'm going to do to hide these is I'm going to find a point where I want our animation to start. And I want it to start like right here. So I'm actually going to cut off our layer itself. So right here, it's going to start off at nothing and then form out of nowhere. Lastly, I'm going to add motion blur to everything, which is going to help sell this effect. And it's as simple as that. This is how you design and animate a fun cell animation in After Effects. I hope you found today's tutorial to be helpful. Thanks for watching and stay creative.